can question and answer as much as we can. I mean, it's like, I mean, you've probably watched TV or watched people speak at colleges, and I'm sure you saw Tabor Ali doing it and various aspects. What was the experience like? Um, man, that was a great experience. It's my first time really giving it. That was my first time really giving a public speech. In a sense. So, uh, and I had fun. I, it, it was definitely a first, and I hope to do it more. But uh, it was a good experience. What was your process for actually making a speech? Um, it was a long process, you know, taking stuff out, adding stuff in, you know. Just I wanted to connect with the crowd and connect with things that I know people will resonate with. I knew who I was talking to. I was at Harvard, the setting that factored in. Also, uh, I was talking to a lot of teachers, professors that were there as well. So, you know, I wanted to be obviously cognizant of the things that they would think of. And obviously, speak on something that can connect with them as well. When the, how much study have you done in educational theory? Just all the concepts you've come up with. Uh, I would say a lot. <laughs> when, when did it start? When did it start? When I got to college, you know, I took an ed educational class. Like I got placed. Well, Summer Bridge they put us in the classes, you know, based off our interests. My first class that I put was always an education class. And, and uh, after taking that class, I guess they saw something or, or whatever. But I was able to take graduate level classes in education after that. So uh, I was taking graduate level classes. And I took an independent study. I never told nobody. But I took an independent study when I was at Cal with the, the dean of undergrad, well, the head of education department at, at Berkeley as well, where I chose a bunch of readings that I wanted to read. He chose a bunch of readings he wanted to read. And if you if you weren't a basketball player, would you be in education? Um, it's safe to say that. I don't know. Jalen, so many people showed up with unbasketball related questions to learn more about you as a man, person. What does that mean to you? It's an, it's pretty impressive. What is what? Well, that people showing up not necessarily with basketball or NBA related questions, more learning about you and what you've done and the articles that you've been involved in and and having really thought out questions for you that were were awesome. It means a lot. To, it means a lot. But me coming up here in reality, it means a lot. But it really wasn't about like me. Like I wasn't speaking for myself necessarily. I was. I don't speak for everybody, but I know I people in my neighborhood, my community, and feel a certain type of way, I was, you know, advocating for them, you know, because I made it, I mean, I made it to a point in society where, you know, I escaped the barriers that have been put in place, but I, the people who didn't, should we forget about them? You know, Jalen, to piggyback on that, like, uh, I feel like a lot of times, um, it's hard to find a focus, you know, growing up. And I feel like a lot of times, like, that's sort of the, uh, you know, the, the go-to is like, oh, I don't know what I want to focus on. I don't know what I want to do. What do you say to those type of kids who just can't focus on something that's, whether it's related to school or whether it's anything to keep them away from the dangers that you spoke about today? What would you say is, like, a, a way to, to get them to focus or find something that they really want to do, kids in, like, in high school, middle school, et cetera? It depends. Everybody's different. You know, everybody has their own things that they're interested in. And people are passionate about what they are interested in. You know, focus, um, that comes with, I feel the, the term focus comes with, you know, something that you're passionate about. I just feel like they haven't found something that they're really into yet. And I feel like when you do, you know, that focus is there. Like when I found education, like that focus for me was there. Like when I'm reading about other things and other issues, that focus wasn't there for me because it was hard to understand it. It's hard to connect it to me and stuff like that. So when you find that passion about whatever it is that you're, you're into, I feel like that focus will be there. And I think just, you know, how do you find, if, you're, if the question is how do you find that passion that you're into, um, I think that's what you know, counselors, that's what are for, and that's what education is supposed to be about. You know, they should want to bring out the best in the kid and have them be what they feel you know, the most passionate about. You spoke during your speech about taking some parts out of your speech um, because you didn't want them to get twisted. I guess the way you want to speak your mind and everything, what was the conflict there 
as you decided not to say those things? Um, it was, the conflict was, it wasn't really a conflict, but it was definitely a concern. You know, just throughout media, there's a pushback for, for athletes who speak in society. I don't think athletes are allowed to have an opinion, you know, um, and it's tough. You know, athletes are, um, are evolving right in front of our eyes. We have athletes who are VCs, politicians, et cetera, and still, you know, as influential as athletes are in our society, we're told to shut up and drill. You know, so that was a concern because you see things happen because athletes speak their mind and talk about political issues. That was one of the things I wasn't necessarily afraid of. I was just concerned about because I wanted to still protect myself in that space. But you know, you see certain things happen. You see kid, people get laughed at, ridiculed, blackballed, etc. All these certain things. You know, like I just wanted, to, I just want the notion to change. I think athletes have a lot of influence, and I think if they want to use it, they don't have to. If they want to use it, they they should be able to. Have, uh, have you had much pushback? Have I had much pushback? No, I don't think I have. I don't think I have had any pushback. But I think that's been a part of my brand since I came into the league. You know, even when I went to Cal, what I associated myself with was, was a part of it. And I haven't had any pushback, thank God. But you know, you never know some of the things you might say or some of the things you might you know might be misconstrued or some people misinterpreted, and I don't ever want that to be the case. It seems like you've not really gone out of your way, I think, but you've made it a point to get yourself across as the educated athlete, even since before you were in the NBA. What was kind of your decision making at that time uh, when you first decided to, to do that? To be honest, that was my initial plan, you know. Like, I, I have opinions or, or things just like anybody else. Just like people who have day jobs, they have opinions, they say things they do things, they make investments, they, they, it's a part of it, it's a part of life. And I know athletes, we're typically, you know, confined in a box in the sense that, you know, we're billionaires, we should just be quiet, we're fine. Like, why are you complaining, you know? In reality, we're all advocates of the communities that we came from. And just because we made it out or we made it to a certain place in those communities, why do we should forget about the people who didn't or won't? And, you know, that was a part of me being you know, like you said, I was a part of me making sure that was a point even before I got to the NBA, before I was even drafted. You know, that was what I wanted people to know me to be. You touched on the way that people reacted to just getting to know you and seeing your scholarly ambition. Did you did you feel almost kind of patronized by people reacting so strongly to the fact that you are that you have a strong intellectual capacity rather than focusing on that, the actual substance of what you're saying? Yeah, uh, it goes both ways. I'm not really sure how some people feel, but I, I definitely agree that's something that should be talked about. Are people really paying attention to what I say, or are they, or they just really just fascinated that I'm an athlete and I'm saying the things that I'm saying because nobody, they haven't seen it before, or seen an athlete, intellectual, or whatever the case may be. Like That's something that I think is a topic of discussion as well. Hopefully they, they listen to the substance of things I was talking about. but. Feel, I've always felt that, you know, the low expectation, you know, growing up in society, the low expectation of, of, of me, you know, but, you know, being here has been truly a great experience, speaking at Harvard, and hopefully, you know, some kids back home where I'm from heard some of the things I said here today, and maybe they'll be at Harvard in the next four or five years, who knows. Do you think the more you talk about it, the more it's starting to actually resonate with people? Or think, I mean, you're talking about education reform and things that most people, I think, in the public don't think about very often, but you think it's getting people to try to actually do their research and try to understand it because they're interested in something that you're interested and passionate about? I think so. I think that goes with it. I think that definitely could be a case. Um, or some people are really interested in it, and then, you know, they just don't pay attention to it. You know, it could be, it could be, it could be anything. You know, everything is subjective. Everybody has their own experience. I'm just happy to be here today. You know, I was I had some concerns when I first came up here, but you know, the more I got going, and the more when I got here, I was just uh, the things I had to say and the passion I felt for the things I had to say overrid my concern. Any final questions? Sorry, hey John, um, how familiar are you with the uh, Harvard basketball program here, and um, have you ever talked with Coach Amaker and 
um, has he ever like said to come to a game or um, share your thoughts with his players? Yeah, I talked to Coach. Uh, I talked to Tommy a few times. He actually invited me on campus, you know, on some recruitment and stuff. Like I uh, came up to the school, played some open gym and stuff like that. I was trying to get uh, Wendell to come here. <laughs> Wendell Carter. He was uh, Harvard was on his list. I was trying to get. He ended up going to Duke. Uh, which was a great fit for him, and that was perfect for him. And I'm glad he made the decision he made because that was best for him and his family. But you know, I think the, I think it's a lot of power, you know, in that it's such a prestigious university, and having someone of such basketball stature and just combining the two, because I think sports and education, I think they overlap. And I don't want to talk to anybody zero off. I know I'm talking, I'm talking out there. I'm people are blue in the face, but I just want to say I'm, I'm I'm happy to be here and I'm thankful. Like I said before, like I feel like that notion is up to us, the media, society, fans, et cetera, to continue to, to challenge that notion of why like, it's okay or why should we just athletes shut up and dribble. I think that's ridiculous. All right, we'll wrap it up right there.